This video will show you how to make composite images using PowerPoint. Start by collecting images. Go to Google Images and search for what you want. I want a patriotic background to start with, so I type patriotic background. When you see an image you like, left click on the image once. It will bring up a larger version in the preview window. To save it, right click on the image in the preview window. The pop up menu you see to the right will appear. Move your cursor down to Save Image As and left click. Label the image something you will immediately recognize and then save it to the desired folder. Keep doing this until you have collected all of your desired images. When you're ready to start your poster, open a new presentation in PowerPoint. Begin your poster by inserting images. Left click the Insert tab in the top left corner. This will open up the Insert menu across the top of your screen. Then left click Pictures to start inserting pictures. This will open a file explorer window. Find the image you want to use and double left click on it. Now that I have my image, I want to stretch it to fit the screen. To do this, I must first activate the image by left clicking on it. This will cause the rectangle you see on the screen with the dots to appear. I can resize the image in any direction by left clicking one of the white dots that surround the image and dragging to make it bigger or smaller. I do this until I've stretched each side to fill the work area. Now I'm ready for my next picture. I left click the insert tab again, then picture, and then I navigate to the appropriate menu. When I find the image I want, I double click the image. To crop the image, right click on the image itself and then left click on the word crop. The dots on the sides and corners are now joined with solid dash marks. Left click and drag those dash marks to indicate the areas of the picture you want cropped out. The light area of the picture will be what is left after the crop. What is marked in gray will be removed. When you have it how you like it, then move the cursor outside of the picture completely and left click once. And now you're left with your cropped image. To work with the image in other ways, I have to activate it first by left clicking anywhere on the image. From here, let's say you want to take out the background so you just see Mr. P. The tool for that, along with a lot of other tools, is in the Picture Format menu. So left-click Picture Format. To remove unwanted background in the picture, left-click Remove Background in the top far left. The area covered in pink is the area the program will cut. I want to keep his suit and hair, so I will use the Mark Areas to Keep tool by left-clicking on that icon. I draw the area that I want to keep. You can see some of it here in green. I do this by left-clicking on the area and dragging until the area that I want to keep is covered. When all of the area that I want to keep has been revealed, all the area I want hidden is in pink, then it's time for me to save the picture. I right click and the menu that you see here will appear. I go into the drop down until I find Save as Picture and left click on that.
a file explorer window will open up and I can save the image with a name that I will recognize later. In this case, I'll name the file Mr. P. Again, to resize the image, all I have to do is click on one of the white dots that surrounds the image and drag out or in to make it bigger or smaller. To move the image, left click anywhere in the image area and drag to the desired location. To insert a text box or word art, left click the insert tab. I want to insert a banner that says vote for Mr. P. So I'm going to use the word art function by left clicking word art, which will open the drop down menu that you see on the screen. I then select any style by left clicking on it. To select a different font or size, right click on the word art that says your text here that appears on the screen. If you're changing the font, left click on the down arrow next to the font name and the menu that you see on the screen will appear. Scroll down until you find a font that you like and then left click upon it. Here you see I have chosen Gaudi Stout and the text that says your text here has changed to that font. To change the font size, I'm going to do the same thing. Right click on your text here, activate the drop down menu for size, which is indicated by a number, and scroll down until I get to my desired number and left click. To change the message, highlight the area that says your text here and type your desired message. I can move that headline the same way I can move any picture, just by left clicking anywhere in the headline area and dragging it to the desired area of the screen. Once my poster looks the way I want it to, I'm now ready to save it as a PNG file that I can submit to my teacher. To do this, I'm going to need a little bit more working room. So I'll shrink my workspace by left clicking the minus icon in the lower right corner. To save all the elements as one image, I need to activate them all at once. To activate all the images and the words on the images, I left click outside all the images and drag it so that I'm highlighting the entirety of every image in the poster. Here you can see that all the images are activated because there is the dotted rectangle around all of them. The background, the picture of Mr. P, and the vote for Mr. P banner. Now I can right click anywhere on the poster so that the menu you see to the right appears. Left click, save as picture. This will open up a file explorer window. Navigate in your windows until you get to your distance learning folder. Now name it something you'll recognize and save it to the civic section of your distance learning folder. It's now ready to be submitted to your teacher. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to message me. And good luck with your posters.